Hi, I'm TJ Walker. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the delay trick that Eddie Van Halen uses in Cathedral and Albert Lee uses in the solo at the end of his version of Country Boy. So here's a kind of version of Cathedral to show you how it works here. And here's a tune a bit like Country Boy to demonstrate how it works in this context. So let's have a look at how we need to set up the delay pedal. First thing is you need the repeat to be at the same volume as the note you're playing. On this pedal, it's the echo level. So if I play a note, the repeat is the same volume. Actually, if I knock it up slightly, it's a little bit closer. Also, you only want to have one repeat. So instead of, on here, it's the repeat setting. You'll get more repeats if that setting's turned up. If I turn that down, you get a single repeat, which is what you're after. This pedal has a subdivision button. If I set it without the subdivision selected, as you can see, the buttons have fallen off. This pedal's done hundreds of gigs and it's a bit sticky and dirty. But this is on the straight setting, so this is what a delay pedal will do normally. So let's set the tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. It will repeat at the same tempo as you tap. Now, if your pedal has a subdivision setting, it might be called something else. On this pedal, it's called subdivision. If I select that, and I select the tempo again, set the tempo again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we're getting the subdivision we need to be able to get this delay effect. That's the basics of how to get the setting. But to make the trick work, so let's make sure we're in time. One, two, three, four. And we need to then start going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And... So now we've got our delay pedal set up correctly to be playing a single repeat at the same volume as the dry signal. We can then work on getting the rhythm correct. I think a good way of understanding this is to do a diagram and to visualise it. So here is a diagram of a bar of semiquavers or sixteenth notes. So each beat is divided into four subdivisions. So you'd count this one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. So if I play on each beat, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. For this effect to work, you need the delay pedal to be giving you a repeat on the one E and a. Uh. So it needs to be repeating three sixteenth notes after the original signal. So I'll play the notes of how it should sound. So it should sound like this. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So if I set my delay pedal, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So now if I add in the additional note, so I now need to be playing a note on the AND of each beat as well, so I need to be playing one and two AND. So if I do that without the light pedal, it should sound like this, one and two and three and four AND, one and two and three and four AND, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So if I do it with different notes, you can hear the difference, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. If I now turn the delay pedal on, it should fill in the extra subdivisions that I wasn't playing. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. If you're playing on your own, you can kind of set your tempo to the delay pedal. If you're playing with a band and you don't have a tap delay on your pedal, then you kind of need to set the tempo. Before you start the track, and then get the band to play in time with your delay pedal. 
good luck with that one. If you're playing with a band, ideally you need a pedal with a tap tempo and a subdivision option on it. If you've got that, you can then set the tempo by tapping in time with the music you're playing at and then hopefully your delay will be in time with it. So if you want to use this delay trick in your recordings, here's how you set the delay up. To give it some context, I've created this drum pattern which has the kick drum playing on the beat and then the snare drum playing the semiquavers or the 16th notes, the subdivisions of the beats, four in each beat. So one eander, two eander, three eander, four eander, and this is what it sounds like. I've played this guitar part over the top and here's the notation. In the standard notation I've indicated the notes that the delay pedal is playing with the diamond shaped note heads. In the tab I've shown them as rests and just shown the notes that you actually play. So it's just a G major scale. Let's hear that on its own. This is without delay. So the two together, the guitar without delay. Now the delay I've used is H delay, the Waves plugin. I thought this is a fairly common delay. So this is how the plugin opens. It's one eighth note dotted. That's in reference to where the delay note occurs. It occurs after a dotted eighth note, which is a dotted quaver, which is worth three of these sixteenth notes. So if we go back into the drums, it means the dotted quaver is these three semi-quavers or sixteenth notes. So the delay will occur on this note here. So one e and a. This is how it opens on my system. Uh, an eighth note dotted, 120 BPM, which is the tempo of the project, and it's synced to it, it's syncing from the host. Now on mine, it always opens with the wet signal on full, so that would sound like this. You're only hearing the delay there, so I need to set that 50-50 so you're hearing the dry and the wet signal equally. You also need to turn the feedback down to zero so you only get one repeat. So if you set it like that, this is how it sounds. And again without the delay to hear the difference. With the delay. So that's how you do it in your sequencer. So there we are, there's the delay trick. It's a pretty good trick if you can get it right. It's difficult to get it right sometimes in a live setting, but it's quite handy. You can do it in recordings because you can use the automatic divisions set in your sequencer. Please hit subscribe and leave me a comment and I'll see you on the next video.